Dear followers, hi, and I'm really happy and really eager to for this pop talk. Today the topic is a very hot topic, the warm and good technique, so very hot. And uh, <laughs> of course, I'm looking forward to to hear Fabio on uh, this topic. So Fabio, if you want, you can start sharing your experience. Hi, and we are hi, here Filippo. to learn, so... Hi. hi, Filippo. Thanks for, uh, for the presentation. How do you feel? Fine. We are in uh, phase two. Basically, it's like phase one with a moderate low. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> So just kidding, we need to smile a little bit, so otherwise uh, yes. it's really hard. <laughs> you have to, you have to. Uh, today for me has been the first day in the office after a long oh, okay. time. Not easy. Yesterday, not easy, not easy, not easy at all. Not easy, not easy oh, at all. Yes. Anyway, come back to to the topic. So today I want to just share with you some concept about, about the role of three-dimensional obturation in endo and the role of the hydraulic pressure in endodontics. It's, it's a hot topic, uh, interesting topic, in my opinion. Just a couple of words and come back to, to the knowledge. So the secret of the success in endo, it depends on many, many aspects. Rational for treatment strategy, anatomic knowledge, cleaning concept, technique, of course, technology. But in my opinion, the three dimensional obturation and the good restoration are uh, so important, really important. And I want to remember to all of you that our treatment is finished only when the post endo buildup is done. So that's why the coronal sealing is really, really important. Not of course the coronal sealing, but the sealing of the root canal system. So the therapy fail uh, because we have some leakage. So, and the failure is strictly connected with the leakage of the root canal system. Uh, look at these cases, for example, on your right uh, is a lateral incisor uh, with uh, a normal root canal treatment, uh, but the root canal treatment missed some uh, anatomy. And that's why after the resection, after the root and prep and after the root and filling, we can obtain the three dimensional obturation and the healing. It's the same when we want to approach uh, a rest surgery. In, uh, on your left, um, this previous surgery and miss it completely, the retrograde seal uh, is the feeling is totally inadequate. So that's why we can reset the root, root and prep, root and filling, and we can obtain three-dimensional obturation and the healing. So what's the role of the three-dimensional obturation? It's determinant because in both cases, we have some bacteria inside the root canal system, but we close the door and we get the healing. So if the role of three-dimensional alteration is not so important, the root canal, I'm um, sorry, um, the microendodontic surgery can't work, can't work. So, because all the time we can close the gap and entomb the bacteria inside the root canal system is a, is a logical and simple um, topics. It's really simple. Action and reactions. So 
uh, how our role is to close the gap. Is it possible to eradicate all the bacteria from the root canal system? No, we know that is not possible. So that's why the obturation and the role of the, of the three dimensional obturation is so important because we should prevent bacteria leakage. So that's why the solution is completely fill and shape and clean the space to prevent periapical and periodontal fluids percolating into the root canals and feeding microorganisms. So we can do that, reducing the volume of the sealer and entombing any residual microorganism in order to prevent their proliferation and pathogenicity. So in theory, it's simple. In the past, we can read some studies about it. John West studies is a very important paper published in the 80s, uh, where John got in the 100% of the failure, at least one leaking POE. In more than 80% was an underfilled root canal system, in 50% an overextended root canal system, but all the time he got at least one leaking POE. Never he got the failure where all the portal of exit were completely three-dimensional obturated. So that's why I want to show you as, as a typical example. We have a lesion, it's a lateral lesion, very good treatment, endodontic treatment. So we decided for the surgery, we open an osteotomy laterally to the root, we remove the lesion, Look at the portal of exit. One portal of exit uh, was already already filled, but the other one is completely empty. So cleaning, shaping, and packing. So exactly we have to follow the principle that usually we are doing in the orthograde treatment. That's it, post-op and the healing. So we just close the gap. In my opinion, it is so important this concept because we, we should try to do the same things in the orthodox way. It's not simple because the anatomy is very difficult, very strange, but in general, we have a great difference in between the failure and the success. Uh, and the success is strictly uh, connected with a good shaping, but also a good obturation technique. So we can use cold gutta percha, single cone, lateral condensations, but we can use also warm gutta percha. Uh, I started to use warm gutta percha uh, early in the 80s. I, I started. Uh, at the beginning of my career with a lot of condensation, but after a couple of years, I moved immediately, immediately to, to the one gut aperture technique. And uh, this is a study conducted by Shimon Friedman, the name is Toronto study. And after four years and six years follow-up, uh, the difference in terms of outcomes between one vertical condensation and cold lateral compassion is about 10%. So 90% for one vertical condensation and 80% for lateral compactions. So um, the question is why I, uh, I should use another technique? Also because technically it's simple. Uh, we have different kind of technique if you want to use one that the percha, uh, vertical condensation, single wave of condensation, uh, carrier-based technique, but all these techniques are really effective. Uh, this is what's happened inside of the root canal system if you want to, to, to condense with the single wave of condensation, for example. Look at the anatomy, it's completely filled. So uh, why 
the vertical condensation is so effective for the hydraulic pressures. Uh, look uh, how big is it? Is the pressure inside the lateral canal? It looks at the cement in this case in the end of block we are using Vaseline just to 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 see uh, the get the pressure inside the in, in the lateral canals. Uh, but it's evident that we have a lot of pressures, a lot of pressures. Uh, but look at the case, uh, the clinical case. Uh, it's a normal case uh, with uh, an amazing anatomy. I pack one lateral canal and one system, another an additional system. But uh, for sure, the lesion in this case, it depends on the lateral portal of exit. Look at the shape and the position of the lesion. So that's why if I can't clean, clean and pack that branches, probably I can get the healing. But in this case, look at the post-op, is a completely missed canals. I miss it completely, the second system in the lower premolar. So it's a big mistake. I did the big mistakes. But thanks to the technique, thanks to the one at the percha, I close, in any case, the gap. So why I, I haven't to use a so efficient technique? Why? It's a nonsense for me. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, was possible to, to, to put the K5 inside the lateral canals and clean also mechanically the lateral canals. And probably I will get the healing in any case, but for sure all the time that is possible to clean and not only uh, thanks to the irrigation, but also to clean mechanically the system is a good is a good news, but after that, I can't leave that space empty. So everything that we know about vertical compensation comes from Schilder's technique, from Schilder, and I learned the Schilder technique in the eighties. Uh, is in my opinion is really really simple. All the time that we we are teaching this technique to to the students and to the colleagues. At the end of the end zone, all the guys are, are asking, but listen, th that's it? That's it? Yes, that's it, because it's simple. So the problem is not the compaction, it's not the heating. Of course, at the beginning of the story, we used a uh, cold spreader heated on, 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 on the flame. So it was really, really difficult today. Nowadays, we can use very a uh, useful system uh, like fast pack and fast fill and it's, it's easier, it's much, much easier. But in, in general, the technique is, in my opinion, is really simple. It's not difficult. Uh, if you want, you can use not the vertical condensation, but the single wave of condensation is another system using just one um uh, one uh, um, oh my god i forget the name not the sprayer <laughs> just one plugger is a is a taper plugger and just with in one shot we can close completely the system is a good alternative um so both the technique uh are in my opinion are the same or we can use the carrier base uh, obturation technique. In this video, this, this video is, is a Filippo's video, uh, is clear how it is possible to, to fill uh, in few seconds uh, three dimensionally the Vulcan system. It's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, nowadays, uh, the BC sealer are uh, on the market. So we will discuss a little bit about BC sealer later, but look at the video from Riccardo Tonini, uh, where Riccardo is, is doing a single technique with, with, the, with the BC sealer.
look at the system. It's impossible to, to fill completely the system. It's a good observation for sure, but look on your right what's happening if you want to close uh, the root canal system using the one vertical condensation, or in this case, a single wave of condensation. We can fill three dimensionally all the system. So what do you prefer? On your left or the technique on your right? I prefer on my right. So the hydraulic pressure, in my opinion, in our opinion, is so important. So we have to, uh, to use the hydraulic pressure just to close the gap is, is an advantage, is not a, a problem for us. So that's why the rational, the rational, the three dimensional alteration is clear. So the vertical forces pack the material in the apical directions and the horizontal forces pack the material against the walls, filling the lateral system portal disasters, anastomosis, and so on. So what's usually the great apprehension uh, for the colleague? The overfilling. But 90% of the time is not overfilling, it's an overextension. So it changed completely um, the role of the obturations. So in this case, two big mistakes, two great over feeling probably, but what's happened when we have over feeling in, uh, in the preapical tissue? What's happened? Oh, healing. So what's the role of the three-dimensional obturation also when we have a real over feeling uh, for the clinical situation? It's important to discuss about it. Uh, we, I remember uh, a big fight in, 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 in the past about the overfilling. Uh, of course, the best solution is three-dimensional obturation with no overfilling. I agree, I totally agree. But the main reason of the overfilling is a wrong config. The problem is the wrong config. If we don't follow the rules, strictly the rules during the config, we will have the overfilling. We can't control the apical limit of our condensation, but we can control the, the fit of the cone easily if we are following the rules. I did a lecture on pop dentistry about the cone fit. So please go to the pop dentistry and check this lecture. It's not so difficult. And then you will increase your uh, uh, capability to, to, to control uh, the overfilling. And please use also the right tools. Uh, my uh, workflow completely changed in the last six months, thanks to Plano. Plano is, is a very simple, but very, very useful tool during the obturation for our ergonomics, just to clean also the gut aperture cone. Most of the time, sometimes we can uh, make some mistakes and use the mesial distance, mesial buckle, or in the palatal, everyone know that sometimes it's easy to do some mistakes. With Plano, I solved all my problems during the alteration. This is a video from uh, our members, Dennis Quintero Santos, that clearly show why Plano is so important. So talking about, talking about the overfilling, uh, cost and benefit, of course, the catapercha over the apex is perfectly tolerated by the surrounding tissue. We have a lot of papers published in, in, in the journal. And in the literature is then be widely demonstrated that the apical extent of root canal filling is not a determining factor. They failure. 
in a properly clean shaped and three dimensional field canal. In properly shaped, clean and three dimensional field canal, the excess material beyond the cemented dentinal junction plays no role in the healing and can be considered irrelevant. It should be avoided because it's unnecessary. I totally agree. And because it may bother the patient at the time of obturation is right. So we have a lot of um, uh, plus and uh, explanation about the, that we don't have any problems with the overfilling and the clinical evidence is clear. Of course, we have to avoid the extrusion because all the time that the extrusion of material over the apex, we can influence the and delay the helio periapical tissue. So uh, all the time I'm saying that the good clinician don't have too much overfeeding in their observation. So the extrusion over the apex of the filling material decrease the prognosis for a complete drainage tissues. Yes, it's true, but we have to divide the histological situation to the clinical situation. Very, very important. So what's happened today with the bioceramic sealer and with the overfilling? Because we know that the bioceramic sealer are absolutely tolerated in the periapical tissues. Uh, but if you want to combine bioceramic sealer and one get the percha, we can have some problems. But nowadays, some bioceramic material are good also for one get the percha. So why don't combine a perfect, probably perfect um, cement with, with the one get the percha technique? Obviously, uh, we know that the influence of, of the one uh, on the one vertical compaction technique or other kind of technique like single wave condensation on the physical properties of the root canal sealers, it, it's important. So we have to modify something, but we can do it. Look at this video where Riccardo Tonini is using a carrier-based technique with the bioceramic. Look at the flow of the material. How is possible to control the apical limit of obturation combining this technique, biceramic sealer and carrier-based technique? So it's possible. So we have to go forward uh, studying clinically what's happened in, in reality with some follow-up and so on, but we can do it. So in my opinion, the future is Bioceramic plus one got a percha with the right tools uh, because that's really important. Uh, I showed you before fast pack and fast field from HP company, and it's really important uh, using the fast pack, for example, to change the temperature. So if you can control the temperature during our uh, down packing. Uh, Probably we can uh, control the overheating of the bioceramic sealer without any problem. So, uh, of course, uh, at the end, the ideal situation is a three dimensional alteration with no overfilling, but we need a three dimensional alteration. And I'm curious. Uh, in, when we want to approach very difficult anatomy, how is possible to think to try to close the gap with a single cone, with a cold gut aperture? In my opinion, it's not possible. Without any hydraulic pressure, it's not possible. This is my opinion. So um, all the time that we want to, to, to do something, we have to follow the principle in feasible, teachable, and repeatable way. This is my opinion. This is our motto. And very important is the Italiano and the because we strongly believe in our motto, feasible, teachable, and repeatable. So, Filippo, 
I'm any here. questions? <laughs> any questions? Yes, yes, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is uh, what about the thermomechanical compaction with the Guta condenser? If you uh, have experience. Uh... I I did some cases in the 80s with the term with the, with this technique. Max pattern compactors. Packer, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't like it. Sincerely, uh, I don't like it. So it is one of the technique that we can use, but I, I prefer to use other technique where I can control much more my, my pressure and my actions. Just for your information, we did a questionnaire. So according with the results, 52% of followers uh, are using warm good pressure technique. So wow. it's high percentage. So probably Very because high. it's an endodontic group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 24 Absolutely. single cone and 24% uh, lateral condensation. So okay. probably among the GDP uh, the result is but, a little bit different. Listen, listen, Filippo, in, in your opinion, because for sure you, you did it. In your opinion, is easier to do the lateral condensation or the vertical Shielder condensation? Shielder technique, much, <laughs> the vertical condensation much, also. Much, much more no way. simple. But no, <laughs> no way, yeah. no way. So no way. why so, so many efforts to, to obtain so the uh, uh, yes, I, yes I don't know. It's... Uh, probably what was scaring at the beginning is the investment on the on the tool, so yeah. on the device to carry out the technique. But nowadays, uh, the price of the device are really Achieve. customer friendly. Achieve. So it's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is no more reason to not get the benefits of I agree this kind of you. techniques, in my opinion. I agree with you. Also, because yeah. I, I remember very well, I don't know, because you, you are younger, but I don't know <laughs> if you never try to perform the shielder technique with the flame, with the spreader, it's really yes. difficult. But nowadays, because... it's so simple. It's so yeah. simple. Yeah. We yeah. just need a devices and a very short learning curve. But trust me, the problem is the fit code. Is the fit code. Totally agree. The shaping, of course, and the fit code. After that, so, everything is simple. Everything. So, is simple. other question. Uh, one, it's about the importance, thanks to this uh, three dimensional technique, about uh, lateral canal filling. So, it is important to fill a lateral canal. <sighs> uh, when I when I showing <laughs> you the surgery cases where we have a failure and we got the healing only treating that portal of exit. I want to, to ask you, is it important or not the lateral canals? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, it's, it's so yeah. obvious, it's so obvious. Sometimes mm -hmm. probably we can get the healing in any case, also without the three dimensional alteration, the lateral canals. Yes, it's possible. But when you got the failure, if you don't yeah, a, uh, that portal of exit, you so... can get the healing. So I prefer to close everything if it's possible. And most of the time it's not possible but I want to try. So the three dimensional obturation is, is a concept, is a concept, uh, is a strategy. We have to follow the right strategy if you want to get more and more success. It's, it's yeah. logical, it's logical. Uh, yes, because what is important to underline is that in most of the case after a vertical compression, we cannot see lateral anatomies, no. So we, we risk to think that, okay, it's not working, but I, ve I remember very well a beautiful study from um, Dr. Mauro Venturi. So if, if you see 
uh, uh, the tooth where you cannot appreciate lateral anatomy, once the tooth is cleared with the diaphanization, you can see a lot of lateral anatomy completely filled. Absolutely. Because sometimes we just have sealer and the amount of sealer is not enough for to be detectable for yeah. the uh, x-ray in the x-ray in the x-ray so yeah, uh, we have to trust in what we are doing absolutely absolutely uh, some question about the bc sealer uh, so what about the retreatment with the bioceramic sealer uh at the moment i never did any kind of retreatment in case of biceramic so uh i don't know at the moment uh, to reply to these questions, but in the future, probably we will uh, we will do a Face lot this of problem. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, we we are able to face the red Russian cement, and probably we can face also the bioceramic. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> probably yes. Probably. So I think there is a question, but you already answered during the, the presentation. So if it's possible to reach the same result in terms of uh, three-dimensional obturation, just with a cold single cone and a bioceramic sealer. No, it's logical no. to think about it. It's absolutely logical to think about it. Please don't joke. We are talking about a system with high hydraulic pressures uh, compared to the system with much, much less hydraulic pressures. Okay, so uh, a couple of questions on carrier-based technique. Mm. Uh, so when, um, if you prefer to use a carrier-based technique when there is a curve in the middle third or probably even in the corona third, and uh, uh, okay. Um, actually, I'm using the carrier based technique more or less in 10% of my cases. Okay, 10% of, 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 of my number of canals. Uh, and the reason is mainly it depends on the anatomy. So, 90% of the time, I'm using vertical compactions or single wave of condensation and in 10% of, uh, of the cases carrier-based technique. In that cases, we have only uh, probably two choices, single cone plus bioceramic or, uh, uh, or carrier-based technique. Nowadays, if it's possible to use bioceramic plus carrier-based, for sure I prefer carrier base plus bioceramic. Okay, there is not really a question, is it, it uh, sounds like more a consideration uh, to avoid the overfilling with the carrier based technique. Some clinician cut uh, half millimeter, other put the stop and stop to half millimeter. So what you are doing to control the overfilling with uh, this technique. Yeah. yeah. Mm, we have to talk uh, for hours about this topic, <laughs> but but it's an empiric is an empiric situation. It depends on uh, the expertise of the clinicians and about the learning curve. But it's possible to do it, and um, it's interesting uh, to discuss on this topic with Riccardo Tonini because he showed me some videos with different kind of delivering delivering a system to, to bring the cement inside of the root canal system using carrier-based techniques. So um, maybe in some days we can uh, do another pop talk just to talking about this topic that's in my opinion is really, really interesting. Especially if you can, if you can combine bioceramic Plus, plus carrier base. Yes, but I imagine that is probably this is what 
this is my feeling is among the warm good aperture technique is the one where it's more difficult to control the overfilling absolutely absolutely so that's, that's why, why we, that's why <laughs> we prefer I'm to using, use the other one yeah, yeah. I, absolutely <laughs> that's why i'm using carrier base only when it's not possible in my opinion it's not possible to to use another it's a traditional one get aperture technique uh, uh for uh, and so, the complexity. Uh, and by the way, it is important to underline that there is a study from a German group that where uh, it is clear that when you're going to use a, a, a carrier-based te technique, you can have in about 47% of case, 50% of case, the overfilling. So uh, it's part of the technique probably. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But uh the masters have very very few of course. <laughs> yeah of so course, and it depends <laughs> on the cone fit so the cone yeah. fit is the topic okay so uh what which is the best obturation technique in narrow and uh, sever curve canals probably carrier based uh, can could could I get temperature change properties of bioceramic sealer? <laughs> yes, we are we are we are uh, studying clinically. Uh, we are still studying clinically the problem, so it's difficult to say now. But in my opinion, it's possible uh, when we are talking about. Uh, bioceramic and one gutta percha. Uh, at the beginning, probably we we scare about uh, this problem, but probably is solvable. I'm sure that is solvable also because today some company uh, yeah. are put on the market bioceramic for one gutta percha. Yes, it's a very interesting topic, uh, even because uh, even if we set 212 degrees on the device, the tip is not 212. Oh, absolutely. So, so it's absolutely. probably, it's never and, working at and And is in the middle of the one get, of the gut aperture. So the gut aperture uh, reviews. So, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's uh, probably is a false problem probably is not a problem yeah i'm a so, clinician as you know as so i'm not a researcher <laughs> so but in my opinion is a false problem other questions fabio uh, when it comes to warm vertical compaction and when you feel a lateral canal do you think is more good aperture or just sealer I depend. Sometimes it's got a percha, sometimes got a percha plus sealer, sometimes only sealer. But also in the past, the role of the sealer is very, very important. Nowadays with the BC, it's perfect. Okay. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change so, anything. So it is uh, easy to retreat uh, a canal uh, filled with a warm good aperture technique. Ah, uh, of course, it's, it's easier the disassembling when we don't have any three-dimensional alteration, <laughs> for sure. I agree. But, but, but usually, when we have a good endo, when we have a good three-dimensional alteration, when one gutta percha has been used, we don't have too much failure and probably do the surgery is easier if you want to read this yeah. a set. so a question about the sealers uh, which is the best for the warm vertical compaction racing based uh, zoe or bc sealer or calcium hydroxide based sealer i don't want to reply to this question this is impossible yes i'm I'm still using normally zinc phosphate uh, plus resin uh, sealer. 
uh, a typical a typical sealer that we started to use in the 80s. Uh, but nowadays, the BC sealer is a good option. Also for the guys that are using one at the Proto Technique. So I agree. I agree. But just we, we, we are talking about um, something that is relative new. So it, it's normal that yeah. we have to improve our experience with, yeah. uh, with this cements. Uh, uh, one year ago, we, uh, we, can't, we can't use a BC sealer from one Gata Percha. So now we have BC sealer from one Gata Percha. So the companies are producing every day more uh, materials and more devices to try to help us to do a better therapy. Yes, and uh, just to, to speak a little bit, but you confirm that, uh, this is my question, uh -huh. that probably the more investigated sealer, especially when it comes to overfilling, is still the ZOE sealer. Absolutely. So yes. it's, it's okay. Can we incorporate MTA to the warm gutta percha? Mm. And what about... Uh, I think it's strange this question. What about uh, uh, can I completely fill with just MTA? Uh, I'm I'm using MTA all the time that I have to repair perforation, doing apical plug. So in case of large foramens and so on. So in my opinion, when we are talking about MTA. Uh, it's so important to obtain a three dimensional obturation also with the MTA. Otherwise, uh, we will have failure uh, because the three dimensional concept is so important. Also, if we are using MTA or other kind of sealer. Okay. And uh, uh, if we compare. Uh, vertical compaction with the bioceramic sealer, which is, mm -hmm. in your opinion, the technique that can give us a three dimensional and hermetic obturation. Uh, um, a few times that we are using this kind of technique with the BC sealer, so we have to uh, increase our experience, we have to to have more follow-ups, more training. Um, so we are talking something that is relative new. So uh, impossible to understand exactly everything right now about the use of one the Percha and the BC sealer. But in my opinion, it's the future. Okay, and uh, it's easier which is uh, what is most easy and efficient, the continuous wave of condensation or the BC sealer obturation? But as I already told you, in my opinion, uh, vertical compaction, single wave are so simple. Uh, of course, single cone is, is a top in terms of simplicity, of course but uh, we have to, to balance cost and benefit. Uh, it's, it's, it's normal that the single cone plus BC sealer uh, is, uh, is fashion because it's simple. And thanks for, for with this amount, we can obtain probably good results, but the rationale for treatment is different. So I prefer to try to close three-dimensionally the system, the root canal system. So I prefer to use hydraulic pressure with vertical compassion, single wave, carrier base, whatever you want. By, I, I still strongly believe in, in the warm gut aperture. Okay. Thank you, Fabio, for this very interesting lecture. I learned a lot, as usual. I think uh, this 
uh, especially the question uh, session was really, really interesting for the followers. So thank you, thank you very much. And thanks, uh, thanks Filippo. Thanks also for uh, thanks to Diego for the organization. For Diego, as usual. Thanks, thanks to you and to Ricardo for uh, some videos that I showed in the lectures. And mm. don't forget to follow us on Steve Italian Odontis. Today I'm wearing the t shirt. So stay and, tuned. Uh, yes, and looking forward to see the next lecture on obturation. Ah, yes, uh, on, so, on, pop, on pop dentistry. Let's see. Okay, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. Okay, thank you, Fabio. Bye bye. Bye bye. Guys. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.